Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings, and it's been a long time, or I feel like it's been a long time anyways, since I've given you an update here on the Butterfly House. It's the beginning of November right now, so we have released all the butterflies, so they're heading south to wherever they may go there in Mexico or Texas. Uh, so really there's not a lot of action right now in the Butterfly House, but I did want to just show you the plants and such because I feel like they just continue to cycle and thrive, especially because this is such a nice warm area. Um, and it's the beginning of November, but the weather right now is absolutely unbelievably gorgeous for us here in Michigan. It's 75 today, which I think 50s is probably the average um, normal temperature for this time of year. So we are just really enjoying every day that we're getting here in the 70s or even the 60s. It truly is a fall gift. So let's take a look and see just what some of the plants are looking like. A lot of these have been trimmed back and are now reflowering. So it's kind of fun to see um, even here in the fall, the new fresh flowers. So let's go ahead and take a look. So if you've watched any of the Butterfly House videos from earlier this summer, this entire butterfly house was trimmed back to the ground um, because we were having an issue with moths and such in here. That was the beginning of July. The plants all came back beautiful. They were, like I said, trimmed back to the ground. They all have come back beautiful and are just so lush and so full of color right now. So it is November, like I mentioned. So some of these flowers are past their prime. Some of them are giving us bonus blooms because we trimmed them back and others are just looking tired. So let's take a look at some of the things though that are still looking pretty nice. So we have this beautiful cone flower here. Now again, it's looking tired, but this was just one of the, the cone flowers that bloomed for forever. This is the coral craze and this flower really, I'm showing you this just because of the color. Actually, here's one that's looking a little bit better. Um, so a beautiful coral color, but really nice big full blooms like this one here, although this is a faded flower. Um, but this was just really one of those gorgeous, gorgeous cone flowers that just did fabulous all season long. A lot of the milkweed we have in here is tropical milkweed because it just is so, there's so much foliage. And with raising the monarch butterflies, we need a lot of foliage to keep them fed. So a lot of the milkweed is the monarch, or excuse me, is uh, tropical. This will get trimmed back because we don't want to keep any of that old um, foliage going in the winter. So we're going to trim it all back and let it come back next spring. But it's still looking so pretty. So and the gardeners haven't gotten out here yet to do any of the fall maintenance. So it's looking really good. Um, this one here, I believe, is just called orange. So annual orange milkweed. It's about three and a half foot tall or so. The gardeners did come in here and refresh the aqua pots, or at least this one, with kind of a beautiful fall feel with the mums and the peppers and the sunflowers in there. And that's just doing really stunning. So it's pretty to walk in here and just see that bright little splash of fall color. The annuals that were all trimmed back to the ground, they've all come back and are just, it's amazing what a trimming does. This here is the unplugged I think it's called unplugged pink salvia. If this was outdoors, this would be something the hummingbirds would love, but our butterflies inside here really love it as well. We have the rock and blue suede shoes salvia. This was one of our top selling salvia this year with that beautiful periwinkle blue blooms. Great plant for hummingbirds and butterflies. Some tropical red milkweed. And it's really, it's feeling and looking like a jungle in here because everything is just so big and overgrown. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're hoping for is a lot of beautiful color, even though it does feel a little bit like a jungle. Here's a hollyhock. This one is the halo cerise color. Really a pretty plant. So this plant here, you can see there's some holes in there. There still is a few moths in here, but we did a pretty good job killing most of them off. But the one indicator that the moths were just going crazy is they were just totally eating this hollyhock and it looked very lacy leafed, even though that wasn't the case. Um, there's another one that's probably about six and a half foot tall, which is not how tall it's gonna get out in the landscape. It's just living its best life here in the greenhouse. 
There is drip irrigation in this greenhouse, so these plants get watered every day. So they're constantly getting watered and fed with fertilizer and being in this greenhouse is protected from the outdoor elements as well. Here's another coral craze. This is actually a better looking flower. Really a beautiful, beautiful color. Agastache blue boa, still doing pretty nice. This is a long blooming perennial. It kind of has a scent to it, much like uh, anise candy. Uh, so it's kind of not only a beautiful plant, but has a nice fragrance as well. A few more cone flowers blooming. The pink one up front is delicious candy and behind it is frankly scarlet. There's a few of the tall phlox blooming in the back there as well. Just hanging on to the last, last little bits of heat that we're gonna give it here in this greenhouse. So we do have the side curtains rolled up. It's really windy today, so they're kind of flopping, um, but we do roll them down at night because it, the night temperatures are still pretty cool and we're not quite ready to kill everything off in here yet. The Lobelaria Snow Princess is bordering the sidewalk here. Really beautiful white flowers, fragrant. And you can see there's a couple of them here. They really do a very big job with filling in the landscape. So if you're looking for an annual that's um, a nice ground cover spreading type habit, Lobelaria Snow Princess. Against the back wall there, we have the Angelonia. This is the angel face blue. And this again is not a very good representation of how tall it gets. Typically it only is about 18 to 24 inches tall when we do it in the ground or in the planters. But because it's on borrowed time here and living again, it's best life, it's almost three foot tall. Beautiful annual milkweed. This one is just annual, we're gonna call it orange. A few little Monarda blooms here, the raspberry color. This typically blooms in June here in Michigan. A little bit of the Dusty Miller. Primo Mahogany Monster Corabels. Those are doing really good. And they actually, they've been in flower pretty much all summer. So nice long blooming. Corabels are often planted in the garden and hummingbirds a lot of times will come visit them because they have these really small tubular little flowers that the hummingbirds like. They also have nice great foliage color for full sun to full shade gardens. Uh, we will say that if they're in full sun here in Michigan, they do have better coloration. For those of you in the south, you might need to go a little bit of that part shade, I'm not sure. This is an absolutely huge milkweed. This is probably about eight foot tall. This is a planting of three. So there's kind of three of them all planted close together. This is the Asclepius and hairy balls is what um, it's called. Beautiful flowers on it. Let's take a closer look here. All these beautiful white little dangling flowers. And then I'm hoping we have another one planted. I'm hoping to show you the seed pod, but the seed pods too are so pretty. There are little, there are balls that kind of grow up and down the stem. It's great for like a cut flower. A lot of times you'll find them in floral arrangements um, where they'll just use them as kind of like a thriller. But really, you know, when we're looking to feed those monarch caterpillars, this plant does a really good job and provides a lot of food for those monarchs. So not only is it a nice specimen, but it's a great source for food. A few more cone flowers bloom in here. We've got the Echinacea Supreme Cantaloupe, really a pretty pale, pale yellow, frankly scarlet. A few verbena still holding on. This is the verbena, I think this is a plum wine. Coneflower Purple Emperor. Um, I think this is, I forget what this is called. I think it's heliotrope. Really pretty. It kind of smells like grapes. A few other verbena still holding on here. Cherry Burst is the pink and white. And then the purple one, this is one I'm not sure. We kind of got it on accident, so we just planted it here and there, but another pretty looking one. Echinacea Sombrero 
lemon yellow coneflower. Really a nice, bright, clean, crisp yellow color coneflower. Making the way, let's head back and just check this side out here. The Bordeaux Super Tunias are still looking pretty nice. Black Velvet Petunias. Super Tunia Latte. It's pretty much what we have lining the edge here. And we'll just step back a minute and start on this side. Here we have the Mini Vista Indigo. Uh, Indigo. I, I want to call it Indigo Charm. Um, but Mini Vista is the new name, Mini Vista Indigo, which is a great ground covering, low growing petunia planted next to the Super Tunia Latte. Here we have another annual Asclepius or milkweed. This is just called yellow. Really pretty bright splashes of yellow. I love the color yellow in the garden. I don't know about you, I know you're either Probably somebody that really loves the yellow or not a big fan. I'd love to know what you what you think of the color yellow in the garden. Um, but I'm really loving this, this yellow milkweed. Our geratum, artist blue. Few of the meteor showers verbena still trying to hold on. As I'm walking through, I actually am seeing a couple butterflies that must have emerged late. We'll go take a look. So these we're going to want to, it's kind of at that point in the season, do you let them go or do you not let them go? Because it is, although if I let them go today, they'll have about three or four days to get out of here while it's still warm. That's a male. And then there's another one there hanging out in the corner. And that one looks like a female. This aqua pot here we did not tear out and transform for fall. So this has been planted since uh, April or so. Those cannas are absolutely huge. There's coleus in here that's still looking pretty nice. Two different coleus and then just a little bit of lantana still holding on. Some more coneflowers. The reason we do a lot with coneflowers in here is obviously butterflies love the coneflowers, um, but they're also something that lasts and blooms for quite a long time. Annual milkweed. The center of this garden, we planted the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry. So this was a new annual for 2022, and we have absolutely fallen in love with this petunia. So this is gonna get planted a lot more in mass around here for next summer. So we, we started it and did a pretty decent sized mass planting, um, but we're gonna go big and go even more next year. We're, we joke around here that Supertunia Jazzberry is going to overtake Supertunia Bubblegum as far as being the top selling plant. Only time will tell. But what do you think about Supertunia Jazzberry? Like, do you love this color or not? Just curious what you're thinking. You can leave your thoughts below. A few more milkweed there. Oh, looks like there's a couple more butterflies again. So we've got a couple females hanging out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and let those out after we, I get done doing this video. Here is an absolutely huge tropical milkweed. This is uh, orange. There's two plants here and it takes up about a 10 foot long strip in the butterfly house. So this too is another great, great source for the food for those monarch caterpillars. Here's another one of the Asclepius hairy balls plants. I was hoping I was going to find the seed pods on here, but unfortunately it's not going to seed yet. It's one thing we find with the annual milkweed is that this one will go to seed out in the landscape, not a problem. But these, the yellows, the oranges, and the reds, they, for whatever reason, don't really go to seed so much. So we have to just make sure we save the plant from year to year by trimming it back and hoping that it doesn't die in the winter. So 
really look at this huge huge specimen two plants this is so it's definitely taking over this garden which we are 100 percent okay with some more of the angelonia angel face blue kind of hanging out in this area a little big just kind of a nice upright thriller for container combinations some more I think like I said I think this is heliotrope if it's something else we'll pop it up on the screen sometimes it's a struggle to remember the names of all the different plants really pretty and it's smelling so good so this has been a very fun and exciting year here at Garden Crossings with the Butterfly House um, next year we're excited to do it again typically the Butterfly House will open somewhere around mid to late May depending when we're able to get our monarch caterpillars in and then it goes throughout the summer and into the fall, usually until about the beginning or mid-October when we release the butterflies um, out into nature. Hopefully you found this exciting, this update of the Butterfly House. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. We'll always get back to your questions, uh, whatever they may be. Thank you for walking through the Butterfly House with me today. This is Heidi from Garden Crossings.